Let's talk a little bit about audio levels. Audio levels are the volume or the loudness of a sound. Audio levels are first set during recording and then set again during editing for final export. We use three different words to describe levels. There's gain, there's volume, and there's levels. Gain refers to input audio levels during recording. Volume refers to output audio levels during playback or export. And levels refers to both, or we just use it to refer to audio in general. Audio levels are displayed using audio meters. Meters display peak levels on a scale called DBFS, which stands for decibels full scale. Average levels, which the meters don't show, are measured using RMS, LKFS, or LUFS. Average levels are always lower than peak levels by about 20 dB. The meters in Final Cut and Premiere always display peak levels. Also, just as frequencies are logarithmic, audio levels are logarithmic, not linear. 0 dB equals 100% of the total audio level for a clip or a mix. It's interesting that the maximum of something is 0. <laughs> if we lower the gain by 6 dB, the audio volume drops by 50%. So minus 6 dB takes the audio gain from 100% at 0 to 50% at minus 6. If we drop the gain to negative 12 dB, the volume drops to 25% of the maximum audio level. If we go to negative 18, it goes to negative 12.5. If we go to negative 24, it goes to negative 6.75. It very, dropping the audio level by lowering the volume has a tremendous impact on the perceived level. It's logarithmic not linear, and audio levels cannot go over zero. We have three goals during recording. To capture levels loud enough to hear the talent clearly, to minimize background noise, though not eliminate it completely because that's why we're on location, and to avoid distorting the audio at any time, even during loud speech, as it's being recorded. So when I'm in production, I set my audio peaks during recording to minus 12 dB. Record levels are never the same as final distribution levels because we can always bring audio levels up during final mixing, but we can't remove distortion once it's recorded in. Now, this minus 12 is a, is a movable target. I work with audio engineers that prefer to record at minus 18 or minus 20. I would recommend against recording any softer than minus 20. For me, I like having the audio loud enough that I can minimize the, the background noise, increase the separation between the voice and the background noise, but I don't ever want to run the risk of distorting. So for me, I compromise on negative 12, and I work with my audio operators, and we try to find some point between negative 18 and negative 12 that both of us are happy. There are two ways to measure changing audio levels, relative and absolute. A relative audio level is created when you're changing the level of a clip in the timeline. You're changing it relative to the level at which it was recorded. An absolute audio level is displayed in the audio meters, the absolute accurate measurement of the audio volume of a sound, whether it's a single clip or an entire project. So when we're getting ready to export our final mix, I recommend when you're mixing audio for the web or DVD to set the maximum audio levels between negative 3 and negative 6 dB. This gives us room for headroom in case there's a spike that goes up a little bit higher than that. And I set the average audio levels between negative 20 dB to negative 24 dB. Remember, audio meters always show peak, not average levels, though Premier does have an option to display average loudness using the loudness radar, which I'll explain next week. Audio mixes that are designed for broadcast, cable, or digital cinema require more stringent audio levels, so be sure to read the specifications that came with your project from whoever's going to be distributing it to figure out what the final specs need to be. But there's a huge caution. Audio levels during export must never exceed 0 dB. Audio over 0 dB is distorted, which sounds bad, and it can't be fixed later. Now, audio will often exceed 0 dB during editing because the levels are not set. Excessive audio levels are only bad during export. 
which is why we need to really concentrate on making sure our mix is perfect before we send it out to create a final file. Also keep in mind that audio levels are additive. The more clips that are playing at the same time, the louder the audio levels will be. Now this is not true of video. If we have multiple images on the same screen at the same time, our video isn't brighter, we just see multiple images. But that's not the case with audio. If I have one clip playing and then I add a second clip playing at the same time, the sum of the audio is louder. The more clips that I have playing at the same time, the louder the sum of all those clips are. Video and audio operate entirely differently in this regard. The more clips you have playing audio at the same time, the louder the volume will be of your total mix. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at the basics of audio for video. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 178. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.